Sheds, it's Friday, May 27th, 22. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for continuing to pursue God. And thank you for being willing to go when God says go. Let's go. We've been talking all this week about the unexpected, that God does not want us to just settle in and get comfortable and be hesitant or refuse to move when he asks us to move. Most of these things can be in very small ways that don't require us to leave home and travel a distance and set up a new missionary post in an unknown land. Most of these are just, you're kind of settling into your ways and you're on autopilot and God wants you to share the gospel and remember to be kind and love. We think of, oh, what would happen if God called us as he called Moses? out of the wilderness after he was well into his mature years. How could I ever do that? The question is on the simpler things. Are we just driving by people in need? Are we responding in anger when people frustrate us? These are the the places that we're going to be challenged and tested more often than whether we pick up and move our entire life to Utah. Today I want to talk about confirmation. This blends nicely with what we spoke of yesterday, which is the chapters and the the requirement that we step out in faith when things aren't so clear. But as we move out in faith and confidence in God, things become clearer in time. The other piece of that clarity that God provides is confirmation. He doesn't leave us hanging on whether we moved in the right direction, if he is pleased with us, if we are doing as he asked us to do. Confirmation is one of the places I love most because it's where we get to witness God's hand move. It's that pat on the back. It's that well done, good and faithful servant that we're all seeking when we have obediently moved out and done as God was prompting us to do. The beauty of it is the more that we move, the more that we respond, the more obedience that we display, the more times we get this confirmation. If you have not witnessed God's hand move in the last year, chances are you have settled in to just a comfort zone and are no longer listening to the Spirit and want to just be left alone in your backside of nowhere location. If God asked you to move today, would you respond as Moses responded? Someone else, Lord, I've, I've done enough. I'm pretty settled here. Surely there's someone else who is just coming up that shares your heart and your zeal and your passion. Choose them, Lord. In that moment, I need you to consider why is God prompting you to move? Have you considered that God is prompting you to move because he loves you and doesn't desire to see you 
waste away on the backside of nowhere. No longer confident in him. No longer reaching out. Much of the things that God asks of us are not only for those that he desires to reach, but they are for the one who is reaching. I praise God for Connections Church and all the, the people that I get to share the gospel with. But I also recognize it's Connections Church that keeps me in relationship with God to where I get to witness his hand move regularly. That's a wonderful place to be. And the invitation is not just for me, it is also for you. The best part of being in God's plan are these moments of confirmation where you know that he is pleased. Peter receives that same confirmation in a major way. Consider where Peter began in our story to where Peter ends in our story, and it's miraculous. Peter begins by being kind of isolated, perhaps needing a break from all the chaos that occurred in Jerusalem upon Stephen's death. It not going as planned. I thought we were going to build a, a thriving church here in Jerusalem, Lord. And now everyone has been scattered. What's my role as the rock of the church? And he goes off to Joppa and a time of seeking God. And God did not let him twist very long or he's showing up in a vision and opening a new chapter. Perhaps Peter was not ready for the new chapter. Perhaps Peter was thinking that he would get a little bit more time of just allowing God to tend to his wounds and give him a clear revelation. New chapter opens with challenging some of the very ideas that are core to his understanding of who God is and the God of, of his ancestors. And now he's being challenged to invite the new, to expand the gospel message to the Gentiles. And when given the opportunity, because of the vision, he goes. But still trying to puzzle out exactly what God is up to. By the time we reach yesterday, we're, I see it clearly now. The gospel message is for everyone, just as it was proclaimed by the prophets. And now we receive the confirmation that everything that Peter has done to this point will produce the results that God foretold. In Acts 10, 44, even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Now, this is a, a mirror, if you will, of the events that occurred in Acts 2. When the Holy Spirit was poured out upon those who had been gathered in the upper room. It was the jumpstart of the church. 
was where we believe that the equipping, the, the empowerment to accomplish all that Jesus was asking for the church to accomplish was poured out. And here we witness a very similar event happening in Cornelius' home. This time, amongst Gentiles. If that isn't confirmation, if that isn't the, the other shoe, if you will, that we've gone through this process of developing and building a church and sending it out through the, the death of Stephen. And now the next chapter opens and it, the gospel message is going to be sent out to all of the world. So it's all it's a, a bookend, if you will. It's the end of, of a chapter that began in Acts 2. But it's also the beginning of our story. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, Cornelia asked him to stay with them for several days. This is it. This is the new. The new that was prophesied thousands of years prior. Not so new, but new to those who were experiencing it. And now that their eyes have been open, recognizing that God is at work. I live for days of confirmation. But the only way that we receive and see these glorious days of confirmation as we witness here in Acts 10 is by, to be act, by being active in the church. Those who are looking to stand pat, those who are looking to just ride it out, those who are looking to, to retreat to the bomb shelter they're not receiving confirmation. They aren't hearing from God. They aren't witnessing his hand move. God desires to write you in to his story. And the more you participate in his story, the more you will witness events unfold before you that you didn't think were possible. God has also given you the choice. Just as he gave Moses the choice and Peter the choice, he is giving you the choice to hear and respond to the unexpected. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for including us in your story. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to participate, fully participate, to where we are front row to everything that you desire to do in our community, in our nation, in our world. Is there any better place than here? You are what matters. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your belief in us. Help us to grow that our neighbors might be saved and you 
glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good week. Looking forward to next week. Before then, we have Sunday. Hope to see you all there. Know that I love you and I miss you. Please be good. <laughs>